end up with later. But again, it doesn't matter. Just make it look like it's easier. You were stepping over the weapon and stepping back. I just showed a bunch of half retreat actions over the blade. Half advance. Finish advance. Retreat. Retreat. To really get over your blade completely, try to do it in three little steps. One, two, three. Four. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. The danger is not to bring this foot too close. One, two, let's make sure the second step is small and sharp, and three, lifting it up and over. One, two, three. close maybe for the end of that step. One, two, three, making sure I'm sharp and small. One, two, I'm going to make sure I really reach with my back foot. Three, so I don't finish stepping wide. Advance, retreat, advance, retreat, half retreat, advance, retreat, half retreat, finish retreat, advance, advance, retreat, advance, half advance, finish advance, retreat, half retreat, advance, half retreat, advance, retreat, retreat, half retreat, finish retreat. Want to add a little bit of strength work? Add your mask. We already did footwork with our mask, of course. I'm practicing all the same thing, but doing it with your mask. When you're just focusing on your feet, frankly, I suggest maybe put your hands in your hips first so you don't have to worry about how you're holding your arms. Once you have your feet organized, start holding your mask. Again, in the fingertips, don't just hold it clenched by the tongue. It's important holding it in cups in the fingertips. This is what helps develop, again, your finger dexterity. This makes what makes sense and unique. Advance, retreat, making sure I'm holding it out in front of me. Really reaching that back foot on my retreat. So I don't have to worry about my hands while I concentrate for what I'm doing with my feet. Again, good lunge technically starts with the toe lift. You watch a lot of slow motion video of high level fencers, you'll often see sort of a start this way. They're lifting the heel first. Yeah, they're a little bit off balance maybe, really, but you'll always see even if the start is here, you'll still see that toe kick. To make sure you're emphasizing that toe kick. And again, what happens with the rest of your body determines what type of lunge you're going to do. At some point in this series, we'll look at each of the six different kinds of lunges. Right now, we're just looking at a good one. Lift the toe, kick, and lunge. 
Of course, we hope you have your FAP ring at home also. Use your ring. Classic is also the quarter kick. One of the reasons I like using my foil is if I get a good kick, it's not going to go flying across the room. I don't have to go picking the quarter out of from under the sofa or the chair. You know, don't have to worry about going and getting my ring. I can just kick, recover, retreat. Lunge wasn't so sharp then. I started a little bit here. Didn't emphasize the sharpness of my kick. Again, hands are here. If you're doing this, that tells you you're winding up with your body. You should just be letting your shoulders hang on the hips. Another good, nice practice tool for you. Okay? What if you don't have your weapon at home? Well, use your quarter, use a ring to practice the kicks. Maybe you have a jump rope. Put that down on the floor. Anything that will help serve. Again, the only thing to be careful of with a jump rope or anything that's round is that you don't, when you step on it, you lose your balance. Just be careful, don't lose your balance. We can do all the jumping exercises we did before. We can do all the footwork we practiced before. You don't have a jump rope at home? Use a piece of string. Use a piece of rope. If you have a yardstick, that's awesome. Again, I don't like the idea of the round stick. If you step on it, that will roll too easily up from under your heel. Right, here's what I think is a old hockey stick. See, that was better than it rolling all over the place when I caught it. This one's really making me... See, I'm making a half step, I'm not... And then I up out and I step over it. Fun dual change of tempo. Again, doesn't have to be your weapon. If you've got your whole bag at home, I bet you have two weapons. Make your own agility square. Simplest thing would be to combine forward and lateral jumps. Jump forward. Okay, how many times? How many times? Well, that's your challenge. Could do it on one foot. Could do it from on guard. Jump to the side. Jump forward. Jump back, jump to the side, jump backward. Okay. The right plyometric workout. A very good one for maintaining good wide foot spacing and blending well. It's also to stand on the diagonal, and rather than jumping laterally, jump circular. Jump one quarter turn.
back where I started. Let's go the other way. Oops. All right, you could hear it in there maybe. Ideally, you want to hear one sound on landing, both feet landing at the same time. And there you heard a little bit, a one, two tempo. Make sure you're holding your core tight, bending and springing. This is making me catch my breath a little bit. I haven't done a lot of plyometric work. I mostly have been focusing on my strength and you know, stability work in my back and hips. So not a lot of plyometric jumping, but maybe this is a great time to catch up, especially for you guys out there. What if you don't have two foils? Maybe we can go back to could make it two uh, two bars, two sticks of anything. So you can do the same exercises. Again, I'm not going through a full workout. These are things for you to do and expand. Which means, of course, make sure you do all of your technical practice, non-dominant. Warmed up enough after that little last little jumping exercise that I take my vest off. Remember our infamous band, okay? How to make everything more fun. Take your band. Around the knees. Take a moment to flatten it out so it doesn't roll. That's one of the tricky parts. Around the knees, remember your focus is press out. If you want to add a <coughs> little strength work, again, grab your mat. You notice I extend as I go down, and as I come up, I make sure I keep my arm extended. Right. Again, combining thoughtful coordination with the technical part, doing it with just one hand, adds a little extra balance and coordination factor. If you really want to work the shoulders, add in three five-pound dumbbells. 
More than that, you're going to start deteriorating the quality of your squat. It's going to hang on to my mask, actually. I'm going to use a little agility square I have. Step, 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 step. Of course, you're all saying, wouldn't it be better if we were around the ankles? Absolutely. Anybody who really wants to push the envelope really gets this set of muscle groups. The only way you can really do it, keep your body straight, picking up the feet and not dragging them, is to help keep your body straight. <laughs> 